Janamba, and I'll be talking about change. Now, it's just tying a bit of what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks, working in areas, in areas of error, uncertainty, and trying to estimate all this. And now I decided to tie it in with some of the things that will be common to us as a group of PhD researchers, and I decided to look at change. All right, so the critical delta uh, is a symbol that has shown change over ancient times. Right? And we looked at things like the uncertainty principle of the early 19th century, which has tried to address this. So change is, change is whatever we define it to be. And, and that's where I start off. So what we'll be trying to look at is trying to look at things that people, or what change could cause. And part of it would be change is inevitable in our lives. Uh, it's uncomfortable, it could be disruptive, it's complex, and most of all, it's possible, it's manageable. All right? And basically that's what we want to learn that can we manage uh, change? All right, so what is change? Okay, suppose the change is constant, change is life. But change basically has something to do with moving from one current state to another state. So it has to be the current state and something in the future. Whether we're looking at it mathematically, whether we're looking at it in our everyday lives, it has to go through some transition uh, to be assessed as change. And it's that deviation from the present which we try to measure and look at it and add it, according to number, call it an error, or uh, using any terminology we want to use as a deviation, U turn, or uh, it goes away from the norm. So the good thing about change is that it impacts all of us. All right? Little borns, whether it's old, young, all right? Jobs, relationships, location, perspective, and our life goals. All right? And the thing is, Recognizing change, if you look at, uh, because this is t combining my work with the P on the PhD and basically uh, what the Six Sigma program is trying to do in helping people manage change. So the first thing is for us to identify change. And for us to do that, you know, it, it happens in every walk of life, even unconsciously these things, we do these things, but we don't know it's change. But how we adapt to it after recognizing is very important. So to illustrate this, I want us very quickly, uh, in groups of twos, we just look at ourselves. Just a very simple task, we don't need anything. So if we could just face ourselves in groups of two very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to do a very simple one minute task. And I'll just see how you respond to that. And then we'll just go and just lead up to the next uh, discussion. So if you just could face yourselves as a group of two. And very quickly, I'll ask you to fold your arms this way. Thank God. All right, face yourselves, fold your arms that way. <laughs> Right, so this arm, um, I mean the other arm should be on top of the other one, and the other one should be beneath that. All right, now, have you done that? Could you do it the other way very quickly? <laughs> mm. Are you sure you've done it? <laughs> I'm sure. How did it feel? So what do you think is different about the two approaches? One's natural and the other one's not. <laughs> exactly. So what comes to us naturally, we, usually, we always tend not to want to deviate from it. And that's what change does to us. So as you look at the first things I mentioned on the second slide there, those are the things change could do to you. Now, in continuing to that, you know, that's the uh, exercise I want us to do. So you can see that it's not very easy, but out of reflex, the things you want to do or you're comfortable with is the things you want to stick with the most. But when change comes, it comes in with a lot of frustration. It could make us uh, very unsettled and stuff. But it's how we manage this change, which is very, very important. That's why we try to measure it all in our lives, or to mitigate the effect of change. All right? Oops. I don't know. I lost some. Yeah. So basically, from that exercise, what you discover that if you go through it and want to assess this gradually, what we discover is that this four things as what are our reactions to change just from that little exercise. We have denial, we have commitment, we have resistance, we have exploration. Mm -hmm. So the exploration bit is the bit you actually stop to think about on how you refer to do. But if you take time out very quickly, in the first second I've asked you what you felt about you actually think you did it well when you reversed it. So these are the four phases which are reactions mm -hmm. to change. And, and that's how we follow through. So recognizing it is very, very important. And that makes it aware, and that now looks at strategies for which you can do that. So it's very important that these are the things you want to know about each of these stages, that once you can be aware of it, 
then you can start looking at ways to mitigate the changes of change. All right, so these are the five building blocks which will be leading up to the subsequent lectures we'll be having on this effect of change. All right, so it's the awareness. First, you have to be aware of the problem. Secondly, you have to have desire to want to change. Lastly, you have to have, find and know the knowledge to change. You have to have the ability to change, and you have to be reinforced. You have an reinforcement to sustain the change. So lastly, I'll leave you with this quote, all right? And those are things change can do to you. You can't cross a sea merely by staring into the water. <laughs> Something has to change about that to cross the sea. Thank you. <laughs> that was great.